Hi guys, this is part two to the Optimal Risky Portfolio with uh, four assets. We finished off in the last video uh, calculating what the Optimal Risky Portfolio should be with these uh, with these four different assets here. We went through all these different steps uh, to get here. And you can see that uh, with based on a 5% uh, risk-free rate, uh, the Optimal Risky Portfolio to maximize the Sharpe Ratio we, sh we saw last video that we should hold about 43, 44% in the BMO stock, about 30% in Loblaws, and the other remaining percent in in, uh, in Rogers. Now, <clears throat> this can change, right? Um, you know, depending on the risk-free rate, uh, how, again, remember the Sharpe ratios calculate the expected return uh, minus the risk-free rate. So the risk-free rate can, can sometimes impact, uh, you know, what portion of assets we should hold in our optimal risky portfolio so let's go back through the solver example but let's change the risk free rate here now we're going to change the risk free rate uh, to two percent let's see if this is going to impact uh, what the optimal uh, risky portfolio uh, is going to look like so remember again we go back to solver remember guys if you don't have the solver uh, add in there remember you might have to go back through file uh, to options um, add-ins go to the add-ins here make sure you have the solver add-in added and if you don't have that you're not going to be able to use the solver so i'm assuming you do have that added in if we go to the solver metric here remember again uh let's uh let's reset all of this so we're going to reset all of it and walk back through the example again remember the, the setting the objective here is we're trying to maximize the sharp ratio so we click on the sharp ratio that's what we're trying to maximize okay by changing what cells we're going to be trying to change these weights here okay so those four weights and again remember we have to add a constraint uh, again potentially we can have short selling etc so uh, the constraint may not be one but uh, we make the, the assumption that uh, we can't be uh, short selling or buying on margin etc so the cell uh, we're going to reference here is the sum can't be greater than uh, it has to be equal to one okay so we add this constraint within there Again, we're not going to make any of these non-negative, okay, so that's the restriction on short selling. We hit solve, comes up with a solution here, we hit OK, and now you can see as the risk-free rate goes down, actually some of our, our metrics change here a little bit. Now look, we, 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 we should hold uh, maybe even 1% uh, of our portfolio in in barrick gold so depending on the risk-free rate etc this can impact your your optimal risky portfolio how that should be how should that should be set up now the, the second part i didn't get to uh in the first video was now well here's how we should form our optimal risk portfolio if we just had you know in in a made-up world of, of just these four risky assets uh, we know the world's much more complicated than that uh, but here in this simplified scenario we're just saying we have these four risky assets now the next question is based on my risk aversion as an investor uh, what portion of my portfolio should i hold in this risky portfolio uh, so I have an option of holding assets in a risky portfolio or risky assets in non-risky assets. Well, how do I decide how much I should put of my total wealth in this risky portfolio? And so here, this is where we have this Y star down here. And so here, uh, if we go back, we can actually determine uh, that uh, by, by a formula and, and based on this risk aversion profile here. So let's say we had a risk aversion of approximately 15. So we could simply say equals to uh, the, ex the expected return of the portfolio minus uh, the risk-free rate, close parentheses, divided by open parentheses, uh, my risk aversion, okay so my risk aversion number and this is going to change for each individual person it can actually change over time for for an individual but at this particular point in time times by uh the variance uh of the portfolio and remember the variance we can simply calculate the variance by taking the standard deviation and squaring this okay so we close that parenthesis i hit enter here actually it says that uh, in this scenario uh when the risk-free rate is at two percent uh actually i should hold uh more than a hundred percent of my wealth in this risky portfolio so i should go out 
and try to borrow money and invest all that money uh, in this risky portfolio, assuming I can borrow this at the risk-free rate also. But let's see what happens now. If uh, if I change some of these metrics, let's say the risk-free rate isn't 2%. Let's say the risk-free rate goes to 7%. If the risk-free rate goes to 7%, now all of a sudden, look, uh, the portion of my wealth I should be holding, you know, in this optimal risky portfolio here is actually only now approximately 72%. So I should hold 72% of my wealth uh, in this risky portfolio that I just calculated. And then uh, the other portion uh, should now uh, be held in a risk-free asset. And so obviously this is going to be inversely related, right? The higher the risk-free rate goes, uh, the lower uh, the proportion of assets I should hold in my optimal risky portfolio because I'm getting better return uh, there for that. But also we can change the risk aversion level. Okay, so let's say uh, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit uh, uh, more risk taking and let's say I drop this uh, risk aversion metric down to 10 you can see now again I should be potentially investing uh, almost all my money or even more than all my money I should go and borrow money invest also in, in this uh, in this risky portfolio uh, if I go to a level of maybe being much more risk adverse let's say I go up to a level of 18 on the risk aversion level again you can see where now only 60 percent of my assets should be uh, invested in this risky portfolio that I've calculated here so we can see that uh, you know this is a, a tool that we can use to kind of understand not only how we should create this risky portfolio of assets uh, that you know investors should should place their money in but also by using this risk aversion uh, measure here this is really where we can somewhat understand of what portion of our assets should be invested in this uh, in this risky portfolio so that's just the follow-up to uh, the part one of the video on optimal risk portfolio uh, when this is an example with with uh, four assets here but if you do have questions uh, you can throw them in the comment box or if I see you in class uh, for some of my students, uh, we can walk through this uh, in a little bit more detail. But uh, it's important uh, to kind of go through this and, and understand how the optimal risk portal can be formed and subsequently how much of your assets should be put into that. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.